yo, what is up everybody, Chuck here, and welcome to my gaming room setup to where we are going to take an in-depth look at everything I have in this room, from the stuff on the walls, Pop Funkos, flags, lights, stuff like that, to the routers, modems, computers, monitors, stuff on my desk, and everything in between, including my Pokemon card collection. Now, if you find anything in this video that you're like, oh my god, I need it, don't you worry, I will have links to absolutely everything through Amazon in the description of this video, so without further ado, let's do it. Now the first thing that you'll see when you walk into this room, assuming of course you're blind and don't notice all the other cool electronics in the room, is this collection of Pop Funkos. Now we've acquired these over the years, some have been sent in through fan mail, some of them we've gotten through Loot Crate and other boxes like that. They just kind of chill here along the wall. Now we also have a Black Ops 3 poster that we put the name of a bunch of people from our streams a while back on this poster so they will forever live on in our stream room. Uh, here's a little in-depth look at what we have in the collection. A couple Packer players, there's some Finding Nemo, there's Up, there's Dumbo, there's Peyton Man. And go pack go, sorry Peyton. And some amiibos for the 3DS that I bought my fiance for Christmas. And again, these kind of just sit here. They're kind of just decoration, but they are very cool. They're fun to collect, and some of them are actually worth some good money. Um, moving on, obviously, one of the main things that catches your eye when you walk in are the Broncos and the Packers flag. Now, I'm obviously a Packers fan. A lot of you guys can probably tell because there's a large flag in the background of every video. Um, my fiance is a Bronco fan. Uh, we got this gigantic chair. We've had it for a couple years. It spins around, and to be completely Completely honest, the only thing that sits on it is our cat, who you will see plenty of olive in this video. We also have this dope Twitch pillow, which we picked up from TwitchCon last year, September, I believe it was. Uh, one of my favorite events I've ever been to. So there's a chance we may be going back this year. So if any of you guys are going, say hello. Moving on, we've got my 100K YouTube plaque, which hopefully we'll be able to replace with a 1 million plaque sooner rather than later. Maybe this year, who knows? Maybe next year, who knows? And some really cool fan art that has been sent in over the past couple years. And moving on to the Juggernog fridge. Now I got this with Black Ops 3, which would have been two years ago now. Uh, it makes noise, it lights up. Unfortunately, I don't keep it plugged in because it's kind of loud to keep a mini fridge running in your room. So there is nothing in it, unfortunately, but I do keep it in there just in the off chance and need a bunch of drinks for a long stream. Or if I'm sitting here editing videos all day and I would like a couple Red Bulls. I've also got a bunch of stickers from last winter that I have yet to give away on my streams. Uh, a couple of them are Black Ops 3 Dark Matter themed and you're gonna see one more thing in this video that is Dark Matter themed and it is incredible. I've also got a printer and that printer does this thing where it prints paper. So that's what that does. And underneath that table, we keep a spinny ball cat toy that is literally a 100% guaranteed chance to bring Olive into the room when you spin that ball. And she'll just sit there and stare at it. I don't even know what she's thinking. She doesn't normally even play with it. She just likes to be close to it. And I promise you there will be plenty more of Olive in this video. So just in case you love her, you think she's adorable, there will be more of her, I promise. We're gonna go across the room and take a look at my Pokemon card collection. This is something that my fiance and I have recently gotten back into. I I used to collect Pokemon cards way, 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 way back in the day, back in like 1998. So I've got a bunch of original ones that I'll show you in a little bit. We also just recently opened a Roaring Skies booster box, which contains 36 packs. We've got a whole bunch of really cool cards. Honestly, the newer ones look way cooler than the older ones. The full arts are absolutely badass. And we actually ended up getting some of the rarest ones from the pack. I told you you'd see Olive again. There's probably like 1,200 Pokemon cards in it, and that's not even all the ones that we have. And it contains anywhere from brand new cards to ones from back before 2000, which you're going to see right here. All of these holographic from the original decks. And honestly, I traded away like my original Charizard, my original Blastoise Venusaur, and I got ripped off. I traded them to my older neighbors back in the day, and they would give me like a regular Machop or a trainer card because they convinced me that those were better. So old neighbor, if you're listening to this right now, I hate you. Now I've got a whole bunch of holographic cards, but my personal favorite is this Dark Gyarados first edition holographic card. It is beautiful. It's in great shape. Uh, I don't think it's worth much money, maybe like 10, 20 bucks. I've also got a bunch of cards from the original Pokemon movie, somehow all still in really good shape. I've got a promo Mew card, which again, I believe is from a movie. And that basically sums up the Pokemon card collection. I could probably make a 30 minute video showing each and every one of them, but you guys don't need to see that today. Now, I'm sure you've noticed by now that there's an entirely different setup on the other side of the room, and that is my fiance setup, and right above that, she's got our fan art. Now, that's a whole bunch of stuff we've gathered over the past couple years, all clipped out, put together on one cork board. I've also got a Chuck doll that I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a voodoo doll where you stick needles into it to make it hurt the person, but anyway, in case you guys didn't know, I went to college, and I graduated from University of Wisconsin, hence why I'm a huge Badger fan, Packer fan, everything like that. Totally recommend going to college, if not for the education, for the experience. This is my fiance's setup. She's got Astro, she's got a Scuff, she's got a Blue Yeti microphone, a bunch of Razor stuff, and a DX Racer. She's obviously not as organized as I am. I kind of cleaned up her setup a little bit for this video. Don't tell her I 
that said that. Right here, smack dab in the middle of the room is our console display case. Now we got this one from Ikea, so I can't give you guys an Amazon link for it. We also got the lights from Ikea, which are very, very cool and pretty reasonably priced. Keep a PS4, 360, and two Xbox Ones in the case. And as you're gonna be able to see right here, there is not much room for the Xbox Ones to fit in here. So I wouldn't recommend it if you're really worried about overheating consoles, which probably I should be worried about. Um, but when we do stream and have extended gaming sessions, we pull the console out a little bit so it has room to vent on each side. And as you can see, these lights right here are fully adjustable. And like I said, in the dark, it looks absolutely incredible. Honestly, purple is the coolest color to keep it at. So sometimes I'll just leave it at purple. Sometimes I'll let it cycle through. I also have an HDMI switch that is mounted on the inside of the display case. It makes things a lot easier. Instead of having eight different HDMI cords, I'm constantly unplugging. All the consoles run through this and right into my Elgato. This one is my Black Ops 3 Dark Matter one, and it is my absolute favorite. PS4, custom made by ProMods, who unfortunately no longer makes controllers, so you can't get these anymore. They are one of a kind. I've got an Xbox One one as well. My favorite Xbox One controller, unfortunately. I spelled Red Bull on it, and now all the buttons are sticky. And I'm sure you've noticed by now, this alien spaceship looking thing. That is the Netgear Nighthawk S8000, which we're gonna get to in a little bit. But first things first, the Netgear Nighthawk X10 router, and this is an absolute monster. Not only is the X10 awesome to look at, but it is meant for 4K streaming and virtual reality gaming, so it is basically future-proof. Olive. I, for one, hate having to upgrade my router every year simply because it can't keep up, but with the X10, you're basically set for a pretty long time. It can handle over 20 devices, Wi-Fi over 7 gigabytes per second, that's a lot faster than we have, so I think we're good. Now you'll notice I only have one ethernet cable going out of that router, and I have two computers in here. There are four consoles, a whole bunch of other things that need to be powered, and that is because I use the Netgear S8000 gaming switch. It kind of acts like a traffic cop in that it decides which of your devices gets priority when it comes to using the internet. So I've got the first slot plugged into my PS4, which is what I use mainly when I stream, and that's because I used to have a bunch of nap type issues. Basically, people couldn't join my games, but with this, all of those problems are fixed. And the second slot I have plugged into my computer. Don't tell Sarah she doesn't have a slot in the switch yet. Just don't tell her. So for me, it's absolutely crucial to have something like the S8000 for my setup, especially considering sometimes my fiance and I like to stream and game at the same time. That'll normally cause quite a bit of issues, especially trying to join each other's games. But with this S8000, those problems are gone. And now for by far the flashiest part of my entire setup, my brand new computer courtesy of Ironside, and it is a thing of beauty. Seriously. It's got an AeroCool P7C1 case that features LEDs on the front of it that light up. You can keep them on individual colors if you want. I have them cycle through the entire rainbow because I like color. And on the inside, oh baby. I've got NZXT Kraken X62 liquid cooling and obviously you can see it lights up. You can customize the colors completely. You can have it sync up to the music that you're playing from your computer. And for the RAM, I've got the G-Skill Trident Z RGB series. 16 gigabytes and just like the water cooling, it is completely customizable in terms of color and lighting. You can even have it look like there's a yo-yo going up and down with certain colors. You can have it look like a comet. You can sync it up to your music. It is incredible. Onto the specs for the processor, I've got an i7-7700K. For the video card, we've got an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070. And for the motherboard, we've got a Gigabyte Z270P. Don't worry if you can't remember the parts. Literally everything you see in this video will be in the description with a link to go purchase it. The build quality is absolutely incredible. So shout out to Ironside for putting together such a beast of a computer for me. Make sure to check them out. Link is in the description to their website. And I forgot to mention, most PC cases on the side, they have a plastic case that you can see through. This one, tempered glass. I love it. All right, moving on to the rest of the setup. I've got a DX Racer chair and two softbox lights that I put right behind my desk. They provide quite a bit of light. I actually didn't even use them in this video because trying to film while looking right at really bright lights is a little bit difficult. For my microphone, I use a Blue Yeti that has a bunch of hair on it because I have a cat and she likes to rub on everything. The shock mount and the boom arm that I use are relatively cheap. I believe I paid about 20 for each of them. Uh, not sure on the brands, but again, I'll have that listed below. And this is what a boom arm does. It moves the microphone around. So in case you didn't know, that's what it does. My Elgato, like many other things in my setup, is custom painted and it is awesome. I wanted something done that I've never seen before and ProMods hooked me up once again. It's really a shame that they no longer make controllers, but the paint job is kind of a metallic silver with a flat teal on it and it just looks awesome. The webcam that I use for my streams is a Logitech C930. Now there's a C920, C922, and there's also now a 4K webcam. The C930 is the absolute best. The 4K, obviously higher quality, but I've heard that there are a ton of issues with it. Speaking of issues, 
These Logitech speakers, out of everything in my setup, the only thing that I would not recommend that you guys purchase for your own setup is this set of speakers right here. That's right, Logitech, I'm talking to you. I'm on my second set of these speakers and I'm not even gonna include a link to it in the description because I don't want you guys buying them. The first ones lasted me like three or four years, totally reliable, and then they crapped out. And then I bought these and literally within a week, they already had this loud buzzing humming sound that I just cannot get rid of. I think it's something to do with this wire back here, but that's a brand new wire. So I don't know what the issue is, brand new monitor. Who knows, don't buy them. I'm sure you've also noticed that I've got lights mounted to the back of my desk, super cheap. They were like 10 bucks on Amazon, but they add a lot to your setup. They can make a regular setup look really cool. You can set it on any particular color or just have it cycle through all of them, which is what I do. Again, super cheap, and they were actually supposed to be mounted on the back of a monitor. However, neither of my monitors have a USB port. So I had to mount it to my desk, which speaking of my desk is actually an Ikea living room table that they no longer make. I'm sorry. As for my monitors, the one on the left is an Asus one that I've had for probably three years and I use that one now for console gaming. On the right is my brand new Acer monitor. It is a 2K monitor. I was thinking about going with 4K. Then I remembered my vision is terrible and I would have to zoom in on the 4K anyway so it would look like 2K and I'd be paying more, so I didn't do it. But it gives you a whole bunch of extra space compared to a 1080 monitor for editing, Photoshop, stuff like that. And because I wanted to clear up a bunch of space on my desk, I have both of these monitors mounted on a dual arm mount that is clamped to my desk. As for the stuff that is actually on my desk, I've got a whole bunch of Razer gear. My keyboard is a Razer Deathstalker Chroma. I prefer silent keyboards. I don't like mechanical, they're too loud for me. My mouse is a Razer Mamba Chroma and it is absolutely beautiful. I actually just got this one a couple weeks ago and my mouse mat is a Razer Firefly Chroma. Once again, beautiful. Now the last thing I'm gonna show you guys in my setup video is one of my newest additions to my setup and these are the Bose QC35 Quiet Comfort headphones. Now the reason I originally bought these is actually kind of funny. We had gotten off of a plane and there was a crying baby on an entire three and a half hour flight. Literally the entire time the baby would not stop crying. I was like you know what I'm gonna get some noise canceling headphones that I can also use to edit videos. So I looked it up and these were the best ones I could find. They're not cheap but they are awesome. Sound quality is great. They do a really good job of noise canceling canceling and for someone who sits here and edits videos and streams and listens to music all day these are awesome so these headphones are wireless they're bluetooth enabled but they do come with an audio cable in case you want to plug it into your phone and you don't have bluetooth on your computer or something like that i didn't have bluetooth built into my computer so all i had to do was go on amazon and buy like a seven dollar usb stick plug it into my computer and boom just like that I can listen to my Bluetooth headphones. Okay, I lied. There is one more thing I wanna show you guys, and that is my phone case. I use a Mophie Juice Pack phone case, and it is incredible, especially for Pokemon hunting. Once you get down to like 10, 20% on your phone battery, all you have to do is flip the switch on your phone case, and it will charge it all the way back up to 100%. So I definitely recommend it if you go on long Pokemon adventures, or you travel a lot, or you just like to use your phone a lot, who knows? So that basically covers it for my entire setup. Now, I haven't done a setup video for probably about two years, but I figured with all the upgrades I've done to my setup recently, new monitor, new computer, new headphones, new router, new gaming switch, new mouse, a whole bunch of stuff that I would put it all out there so you guys had an idea of what might work with your setup. And I know it can be intimidating when you first start out gaming or streaming or trying YouTube, you kind of want to get an idea of what other people are using. So that's why I do this. And that's why I'll provide links to literally everything you saw in this setup video in the description of this video, including if you want to head on over to Ironside to check out their PCs, they come pre-built or you can customize your own and a link to that Netgear. Nighthawk S8000 gaming switch because it might help a bunch of you guys out and it's brand new so go check that out honestly hope you guys enjoyed this video hopefully you enjoyed the cameo of Olive she loves being on camera I love you guys make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed take it easy Peace.